All right. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, Jen, get over it. I'm used to saying good morning. And it is morning where we are here in Denver, Colorado. And welcome to a, another episode of How I Met Your Mortgage. As always, I'm your host, Adam Smith, with Just the Tips Coaching. And with me, pretty much as always, unless I get kicked off the show, is sure. our marketing director and one of our other coaches, Jen Wayward. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. I'm surprised we didn't kick you off this week. Yeah, yeah, well, when surprise it, Michelle and I didn't just do this. Yeah, yeah when I mean, it's you and Ashley, it always goes that way. So <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, considering it's Michelle. And for those of you that don't know, I uh, haven't been paying attention to all the hype leading up to this. We've got a really cool repeat guest for you guys today, Michelle Dugan. Hey, Dugan. Hey, guys. Thanks for doing hey, y'all. this. Y'all, I mean. Y'all, yeah. Uh, well, you're, but you can talk to the entire audience, so it can be all y'all. Oh, y'all. That's right. right. I uh, am learning. uh, I do bring my uh, English to Hillbilly Dictionary with me when I go down to South Carolina. So um, I'm learning slowly. (laughs) It takes a while. It takes a while. (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, it's another language. Um, I do get a lot of bless your hearts. But from what I'm reading in my dictionary, that's not a positive. Yeah, that's probably not great. I don't want to know what you're (laughs) doing to get all those bless your hearts in your life. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, good stuff. But um, yeah, so Michelle, I know that this is a big deal to take some time out of a Monday morning, particularly how busy you are. We are. The entire mortgage industry is obviously uh, still experiencing a little bit of chaos. Rates keep going down. You just revealed to us that you're moving your office. Yeah. You had a little bit of turmoil with a recent vacation. Kids were supposed to go to camp. Camp got shut down because of some uh, COVID exposures. Um, So, yeah, thank you for cutting the uh, time out to do this with us again. No, I'm more than happy to. It's funny because camp did get canceled. Vacation still ended up rolling, thankfully. And it's funny, I had no idea how, like, in need of that vacation I truly was until I got back from it. And then I was like, whoa, like, this is what you feel like when you take a couple of days, step back a little. I still yeah. did a little here and there while I was gone, but whew, yeah, yes, of course. I think we all need it. It's just, yeah, well, we can't get an, enough rest for all the work we're putting in right now. Yeah, I don't know that there, I'm trying to think, and there probably are, so uh, forgive me for those of you watching or listening live or in syndication if there are other industries that you're a part of, but I can't imagine the last year and a half during the pandemic while being in the mortgage business being any more chaotic. I just no, cannot no. fathom. So yeah, that little snippet of vacation, and I felt the same way down in South Carolina earlier this month. Yeah, just mind boggling, although now it's a bit of a distant memory. So <laughs> it is what it is. We'll, we'll try to do it again as soon as possible. Exactly. So tell us about this last year and a half for you. I know you've been relatively active in your work. Um, You've participated some in some other conferences. Um, Mm -hmm. There was one in Atlanta, I believe. Yeah. That's one that Jason put together. He was on our show Mm -hmm. not too long ago. Yeah. Um, And are you and Ashley still doing the Blondes Have More Funds podcast? We are. We are. um, I'll tell you what, it has been so hard to sync our schedules lately just because she stays so busy I stay so busy she's on the west coast I'm here you know it's hard to carve out the time during the day so normally what we've always done is record late at night well just syncing schedules has been difficult but it is definitely a high priority so now it's like when we do get the time we're trying to record as much as we can all at one time you know we might do two episodes back to back three if we can you know if we can fit it in and before we're too tired or too drunk got it (laughs) yeah exactly too much but it may be midnight at you know for me and i'm like Oh, trying to stay awake to get it out, you know. Oh, so. if it's late night um, for Ashley, it's really late night for you with the time change. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's been a crazy world. I will say, or a crazy year, rather, um, and a crazy world. Um, and But, you know, the last year, I think the most important thing that it taught me was, like, you always hear about, like, the, the value of, like, your time versus money and things like this, and I think anybody that was in the mortgage industry, real estate industry last year should have had, you know, arguably one of the best years ever of their career, and it's just trailing right into this year, too, but when I looked at, like, my goals for 
last year and what we were able to attain and do. And we exceeded, of course, every goal that we had set out um, to accomplish at the beginning of last year. And so this year, going into this year, I was like, okay, this year, my focus is to maintain what we did last year, but find more free time for myself. And um, I was like, you know, if, if at the end of the year, if I personally don't make as much, but I have had more time with my family, with my friends, away from the office, you know, then that's what I want. And so it was, um, it was really good for me just to kind of recenter and refocus and, and just figure out the value of time a little bit better. You know, well, it's, it's so easy to talk about, but then once you're in the throes of it and you're like, wow, I just worked eight, you know, five, 18 hour days again for the 75th week in a row. You know? <laughs> um, at that point, it's like, okay, something's going to give here. And I don't care if it's my bank account at this point, like, you know, that's all sitting well and pretty, but I got to take care of my mental health and time with my family and kids. And so far it's just, it's been a phenomenal year and we've really been able to, to do a lot of that and, and just have more time with my family, which is, which is awesome. Okay. Still... This is a big deal. Um, and yeah. not quite as big in the entire content of what just the tips does but uh, an enormous portion of it no question is about team structure uh mm -hmm. delegating tasks hiring yep. assistants loas processors tcs yep. whatever industry you happen to be in so i do think that our audience would benefit from you know some specifics really really benefit from some of your specifics sure. what changed how did what steps did you take what steps are you taking to buy back some quality of life um, so several things. One, the most important thing that I did was hire an assistant who works solely for me. Um, she does anything that I need on not only just loan and production side of stuff, but she's all, also personal stuff. You know, anything that I can delegate out personally and have her handle, I do. Um, so that that was a huge game changer for me because, you know, all along I've I'd had assistants in the past. I'd had, you know, have an in-house processor and all of that, but to be able to just take more off of my plate every day, obviously, and to be able to focus really on the meat and bones part of origination and not get hung up in all the calling this, you know, scheduling this, doing that, you know, and tracking down title insurance or, you know, title work or whatever the case may be. Um, so that was a huge game changer for me personally. And, you know, prior to last year, my production was fine. I did well, but I didn't really, I couldn't necessarily for personally, um, try to like put a value on that LOA. I could, I was like, well, yeah, I could have it, but I had a really hard time letting go. And so um, I actually had to talk with some different coaches and counselors about like, how do I let go of this stuff? Cause I've always been in control. And so that was a big deal for me was to let go, to learn how to better delegate um, and to really truly use that assistant. And uh, so she works remotely, but we are on Zoom almost all day, every day when I'm not on the Zoom here with you. And um, she's listening to my phone calls. She's picked up the industry because she was totally fresh. Um, she comes into town about once a month and helps out, you know, being here actively in the office. But she's been phenomenal. So that was that was a huge part of it was was hiring her to help. And then we switched over to a new um, like pipeline management system. So we are using Monday.com for that now. And it has been incredible. Um, one of our good friends, Sam Parker, he um, has my credit guy, as I know, you know, y'all know, and probably a lot of the people listening as well. But he, you know, we sat down and we talked about automation one day. And he's like, the more automation you can put into your business, the more time that you'll get back. And I, I was having a really hard time wrapping my head around it because I'm like, but I've always been like that hands-on local lender. I don't ever want to be so automated that it feels impersonal. And um, he, you, you, know, you don't want to be the me, rocket. <laughs> no, actually, you, you, you don't. You don't want your clients to have to process their own loans. Right. I want to be oh. the exact opposite. So, I know. Um, but, you know, he he explained, he's like, look, Michelle, for every email that you're sending out and it's the same email over and over and over. He's like, if you can automate that, he's like, if you're sending an email and it takes you five minutes to write it, and you're sending it 10 times a week. You know, he's like, that's 50 minutes, you know, that you're going to get back 
of your time. So that's an extra almost hour that you're going to have with your kids. And so if you do that for every email that you're sending out, if you do that or not, you know, obviously you can't send every email through an automated system, but, um, but Monday was huge. It was really great just to step away from kind of the old school way that we were tracking up and keeping up with stuff. We were using Excel. It was very basic. And in my opinion, Monday is really just a super smart Excel spreadsheet um, that you can integrate, you know, all sorts of automation and things into. So that was a really big deal for us too. And then another thing was just stepping away. So of course, being a broker, we have all kinds of, you know, lenders that we can work with. And the ones that were just like boggling us down time-wise that were much more difficult to work with out of there out of there and uh yeah yeah so we still have a few that take a little longer than others you know out of necessity because of either they offer a product someone doesn't el- you know someone else doesn't offer but um that was those three things together were just were huge for for buying back time for me perfect yeah uh, well and let's let's not pull any punches i think a big piece of what goes on in our industry real estate financial planners insurance agents um, on and on, everybody that just the tips would cater to, we're a bunch of fucking control freaks. There's just <laughs> right. no, there's no way around it. It is just, yeah. it, our personality types just demand it. So mm-hmm. letting go, what you're describing is probably the single greatest hurdle I had in my career. Granted, it's been a long time. And it's still probably the single greatest hurdle we see overall with our coaching clients. Making yeah. that turn into taking all this content that we've put out on how to generate leads and social media and video and contact management and staying in front of people and being top of mind and then turning that corner and taking that as well as all the other stuff you have to do in your workload and letting somebody else do it. it, It's, uh, it's a big deal. Most people stumble and fall. I did for years. Now, granted, this was 20 years ago. But letting go of that work was probably one of the greatest things I ever did in my life. I am a loan originator. I originate mortgages. I am not a pay stub chaser. Right. Uh, it's, it's not in my job description. Um, I add, there are so many different, you know, minutia tasks, things that need to be accomplished, so on and so forth. But yeah, I think the psychological hang up is the big one. Um, And obviously there are a ton of mortgage related Facebook groups out there. And I probably belong to something close to 3 million of them. now, Um, (laughs) As do you, I'm sure. Um, And don't get me wrong. The one you admin is still my favorite. Uh, We we, we won't talk about that any further. Um, But I saw somebody a week or two ago post something like, how long do you expect to wait for an answer when you email your processor? I was like, my answer was like, I don't know, days, weeks, months. I don't email my processor. I don't get involved on that level. They're going to kill me if I do because I'm going to muck it up. They're wizards. They're sorcerers. Being a processor, (laughs) that is, whatever it is. If they don't want to reply to me, don't reply to me. Just get the loan closed. Take care of my clients because my job is to be out there finding more clients for the processor to then close. So, yeah, I can't stress enough, and I've been there, I've made the mistake of not letting go of the work, of babysitting processors, of micromanaging LOAs, so on and so forth, and none of that is in the description of originating loans. Right, right. So, yeah, but I still think it's the greatest mental hurdle that all of us as control freaks have. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, my one of my favorite new little sayings is that you have to let go to grow because you do. But it's like, I kind of like can relate it to, it's almost like a toddler, right? And you have, your business is this baby and you have cared for it and you have nurtured it and you have grown it and it's continuing to grow and grow and grow. And then one day you're like, wait a minute, unless I want to forever be like a stay at home parent and homeschool my kids, I'm going to have to send my kids off to school and somebody's probably going to discipline them a little bit different than I would. They're probably going to get away with a little bit more crap than I would let them get away with. But at the end of the day, I can't do it all. And if you don't, you know, send your kids off to school, then they're going to forever stay stagnant in this little place in this little bubble. And we can't, we can't do that as parents. Right. And so in our business, 
we have this baby and it's the same thing. We have nurtured it. We have, you know, gotten it to this great place. It's our income. And it, and it is, it's like, you don't want to let go of anything because you have your own system. You have your own way of doing things, but it, you can teach, you know, you can teach your team those things and stuff's going to mess up. I mean, that's what I told my LOA from the very first day. I was like, look, you're going to screw something up one day it's probably going to be pretty costly it could be detrimental to a loan but it's hard to screw something up so bad that it can't be fixed so just know you're going to mess up jump in i'm not going to be mad if you mess something up because i'm the one who entrusted you to do it you and, know and, and it's they'll like, never do it again exactly they'll it's never the best mess way to that learn. up again Yep. That's right. It's the best way to learn. So like, I want her out there. I want her doing stuff. I want her to mess stuff up and get it wrong every now and then, because that's how she's going to learn. And I mean, that's how I got to where I am. I know it's how you got to where you are. Um, and you don't, you don't master this business by doing everything right all the time, because th that's just not the way it works. I mean, yeah. stuff is going to mess up and it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. But if we don't let go, we will forever stay in that little tiny bubble and, and we won't grow. It, there's just, there's only so much capacity that we have as a singular human without other people helping us. And, but it was hard for me. I mean, cause I was, I never really thought about myself as a control freak, but when it came to work and my borrowers. <laughs> if, for really, those of you listening to the podcast, you could probably audibly hear my eyes roll right there. But, come <laughs> on, Michelle. but it's funny cause I'm so laid back about some things. I mean, in my personal life, like with, even with my kids and my home and husband, like I'm so laid back about stuff, but in business, it's like, when I want it done, I want it done now. And I want it done my way and I want it done right. But I don't, you know, I don't project that onto my team. I'm not a drill sergeant. You know, I feel like I'm probably a pretty easy boss to work with because I am laid back, but the work's got to get done. The loans have to get closed. Um, and, and if it means stumbling and falling and breaking every now and then, then that's just what's going to have to happen. You know, we, we don't ever want it to happen. It's our, of course, it's our intent and our goal for every process to go smoothly and great, but stuff happens. I mean, y'all know, just like we do. So, uh, but that's, yeah, learning to let go is, it is not easy, but it is so, once you get to that point where you can, it's like, oh, I wish I had seen the light sooner. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly true. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the greatest formulas we've ever implemented and certainly teach, uh, thank you, Carl White, was if somebody else can do it 80% as well as you can, let them. Exactly. Okay. exactly. That's a big issue. Yep. And don't get me wrong. Yep. I've had people on my team uh, that are currently on my team make mistakes that have cost us well into four figures. Sure. Even reaching or breaching five figures, thousands yeah. and thousands of dollars. And it happens. And they'll yep. never make those mistakes again. And yeah. here's the real piece of this puzzle, I think, where one of the fringe benefits of learning how to let go, letting other people do the work, um, I will only take credit for hiring people smarter than I am. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you know, it takes a village, as it were. Oh, but absolutely. The people on my team are smart, really smart. Yeah. They have ideas on how to make things better, smoother, faster, more automated, mm -hmm. more systemized, whatever, than my, you know, 20 plus year mortgage stagnant career could see because I can't see the forest through right. the trees right. after all exactly. this time. So one of the greatest things ever to learn in that sense is when somebody asks you what to do, well, what would you do? What do you think <laughs> we should do? And nine yeah. out of 10 times when I ask, what do you think we should do? And I love their answer. Great. Let's do that. Yeah. And they didn't even really need to come to me to ask, what should we do? Because right. they know they had the right answer, whatever the case may be. But again, furthering, empowering people. Absolutely. I I get a lot of inquiries, at, as do you, I'm sure, in the recruitment space. I mean, mortgage companies just left and right. And this is true uh -huh. throughout a lot of our close friends and colleagues. And one of the things that keeps me from ever entertaining that offer is I also get the ability to help other people and not just mortgage clients, you know, refinance a house, save some money, pay off some bills, buy a home, on and on the list of benefits provided by the, you know, good debt that mortgages provide, right. I think is equal to the benefits I can provide by giving 10 people a job, 
and helping Absolutely. them pay their bills and feed their right. families and so yeah. on and so forth. So, I mean, the intrinsic reward. Um, and of course, we're family. Uh, no pulling any punches, Jen and all of our colleagues and their spouses and children and on and on. We're all at my house this weekend for our annual. I saw that. As, yeah, as long as there's not okay. a picnic, as long as there's not a pandemic, we have a barbecue at my house once a year. Um, and people kind of come and go. Jen, you left early and Miss Sarah. I did miss and, Sarah. And Sarah yeah. came late, but everybody yep. did kind of eventually trickle in or out. Um, and yeah, just an opportunity to sit and not talk about work and not be in the office yeah. and yeah, real family. Jen, right. you were out of town, I don't know, a month ago. Yeah, it's already you, been a month. That's you, crazy. You drove to TJ's house. Mm-hmm. She took you to the airport. TJ's another one of our, what by industry definition would be an LOA. At five yeah. o'clock in the morning. At five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> The week you were gone happened to be happened to include car wash day. Every month, I have a mobile detailer come to the office and do everybody's car. Yeah, I to do this. Yes, you do. Cool. Yes, you do. And, That's amazing. And TJ and Jen being like sisters at this point. <laughs> TJ left her car at home and brought Jen's car to the office Aww. so that it would be nice and clean when Jen got back into town. That's you know, so cool. Yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. And without years of spending that kind of time together and really building relationships and really being in tune with the goals as a team, the goals for our clients, so on and so forth, we wouldn't have that. Right. I mean, you know, we'd, right. Have a, we'd have a cubicle farm of people working for you know, some giant retail operation that are miserable. Yeah. You know, they clock exactly. in, they clock out, that kind of thing. But, you know, we back each other up. We all have a, uh, you know, the company goal is shared. So, yeah, for, for those of you listening, watching, live in syndication, whatever, I, I don't think any of us would deny or could even begin to verbalize or vocalize the importance of having help. Absolutely. Yeah, and so yeah. And for me, when um, so when I hired um, you know, my assistant loan partner, whatever. I mean, she's got like twenty seven titles. She's also <laughs> now like she's she's younger. She is brilliant at technology. So Sam's t- telling me all this stuff, and he's like, "Oh, you should do this, and you can do that," and and I was like, "Okay, that's great," and like it, it makes sense. I don't have the time to learn but all this how? stuff. Right. Oh, she has gone and done phenomenal things with technology for our company that I would have, I mean, it would have taken me years just to learn the basics of it, to put it in place, you know, but it was, I can teach her mortgages, but that stuff is just, it's second nature to her, you know, so she can put all these things and I can literally just come up with an idea and be like, it would be so cool if when an application came in, this happened and then that happened and then these things happened. And she's like, okay. And then literally like later in the same day, she's like, Hey, let's try this out. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to happen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whereas if I'm trying to do it, I would have never been able to figure it out. So it's not always, you know, the hire that might always seem the best on paper may not always be what you need either. You know, I think there's a lot of you know, people in the industry that kind of go one way or the other as far as like, do you hire someone with a ton of mortgage experience or do you hire someone that you can train in mortgage that might be great at this? And so, and the answer can be different for everybody depending on what the need is that they need to feel. It could be both. But it, we have it both. Could be both. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, because the next, my next hire will probably be somebody with a little bit more mortgage experience so that I can start to hand off even more stuff to get it off of my plate, you know, but for her, it was, it was a perfect hire because she's able, she's been able to completely change the whole face of my business in less than a year with things that, I mean, I wanted to do forever, but when do we find the free time? You know, it's, it's hard because we're originating, we're keeping the company going. We're, right. you know, so, um, well, so I'm going was- to let everybody in on a little secret. We're pretty much always hiring. We uh, like, Small, steady growth, slow, steady growth businesses should. Um, we hire slow and fire fast. Yeah. Okay. So by the time we're at a point where everybody on my team is working enough overtime that we could fill another full-time job, we've probably already spent that roughly year plus looking for that next person. Right. And we look at resumes and... For the most part, we just want to know that people know how to jerk off a computer or work the telephone <laughs> or that kind of thing. 
and we look at personality profiles. And obviously, as we grow, it gets more difficult to find somebody that made me remember the event you put on in Austin, where Dre was just a good friend of ours, Andres Munoz, who owns a fantastic mortgage broker operation in Pennsylvania. Um, he was talking about this exact subject, and I blurted out, as you get bigger and bigger, does it get harder and harder? And of course, the <laughs> crowd erupted with the sexual innuendo out of that. But as we grow, it does get more difficult to find one person to fit into the culture of many. Yeah. And that's really what we're seeking. Our job interviews consist of lunch with the entire team. We order in some idea. pizzas. We just sit down and shoot the shit. Is this somebody that we can spend this kind of time with every week? Because I can teach you the job. Right. I cannot right. teach you a new personality. Yeah. If you so have a shitty personality, that's all there is. <laughs> right. So what I have seen, so there's um, a local closing attorney here that has grown rapidly over the last 15 years or so. Almost every hire that she makes is referred from someone else within the firm. So they, and it's like, you know what, this would be a good fit to come in and work with us. Because again, they can learn the business, but the personality has got to be right. It's got to be a good fit. You know, that person has to be able to slide into that role and at work. And um, so I think that's always cool is when your employees are actually recruiting more people to come and work with you, because then it's like, okay, well, these people all know this person already and they like them. So let's, you know, see if I'm going to like them and if it's going to be a fit. So I think that's cool. I saw, I can't remember who, somebody in, in some one of the groups the other day was just talking about the same thing that a lot of their new hires are coming from other people that already work for them that are saying, hey, you know, this would be a good fit for us. So I think that's pretty cool when you get Jen, to that level how, too. Jen, how did we find you? Um, through one of those groups that uh, you're through, talking about, wait, 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 kind through of. Michelle's group, Jeremy Lewis referred yep. us the buyer. So my uh, friend that I lived in the same dorm with in college, and then we ended up living in the same house in Colorado, he had done a loan for her in Austin, Texas. She moved to Colorado. He referred her to Adam. So she, Adam immediately friended her because that's our MO around here. Right. Um, and then she happened to see the job posting. I think I interviewed the next day, the job offer the day after that, and started that Monday. That's awesome. Right. That's awesome. And you've been such a great fit. I mean, it's like as soon as you came on, it was like, whoa, Adam just hired an angel that is able to do all of this stuff. Right. <laughs> like, and, w and we thought that about Jen's predecessor. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. Kelly I mean, was great. I knew all, her as well. All credit yeah. to Kelly where it's due, but... Yeah, yeah, no, we've uh, been very fortunate. But yeah, and Liz found a couple of our uh, LOAs. Another one was a borrower. We were working on a transaction for her and she got laid off during her mortgage process. So like, hey, let's oh, give wow. her a job. We'll, we'll yeah, kill two birds yeah. with one stone here. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. I mean, don't get me wrong, we do run you know, ads in the same fashion that Ashley does. Sure. Hey, sure. you know, we've got a pretty quirky office. There's no dress code. There's no set work schedule. There are dogs here every day. Um, you must uh, have a working knowledge of movie quotes and you've got to be really good with memes. And then, you know, we would consider hiring you. So <laughs> Do you are, like tequila or no? Yeah, right. <laughs> so much. we are legitimately running, well, we try to refer to that as emotional support alcohol. <laughs> but um, nonetheless, you know, we're constantly kind of running an ad in that sense. But without equivocation, the majority of the people that work with us or have worked for us um, have come through a source that isn't Indeed, that isn't Craigslist, that yeah. isn't, you know, send me your resume along with 3,000 other people and we're going to sift through them because it right. doesn't work that way. Not yeah. like this. Right. Well, and I think that, I mean, obviously I'm not, not nearly on your level yet as far as the size of my company and stuff, but at the end of the day, like, I know I want my company to always have like a family feel to it. I want us to all be friends. I want it to be a good fit for everybody. You know, I don't want people walking in the front door every day that don't want to be here, that just dread coming to work. Because if that's the case, then one, I'm holding them back from something that they would be far better suited for. And then two, when that person is in your work environment, I mean, it can become toxic, you know? So um, it's like, I'm protective of that environment. I would imagine that you probably are too. That's why you fire, you know, quick if it's not a great fit, but um, it's, yeah, it's, I, 
And I probably need to speed up hiring just a little bit at this point so that I can continue to grow. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty proud of what we're doing. <laughs> That's good. I'm, I'm well, and go ours, is, comfortable pace. <laughs> ours is systematic. Once we start yes. seeing that everybody mm -hmm. on the team is working more hours than they want right. to the tune where we could fill another full-time role. Yeah. Then we find somebody to fill the full-time role. And yeah. the neat thing about this is every time we do it, we get a little more systemization, a little more automation. We're all able to shift some tasks around, free up some time. That also enables me to originate more business. Right. 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 That's what supports that person. Yeah. And then we grow a little more and a little more. And again, now, if everybody is working a little bit more than they would want, we have enough time to fill another full-time position. Then we do yeah. that. Um, right, so right. Yeah. yeah, it's just been this wonderful model for slow, steady growth. Yeah. We never run the risk of having to lay people off. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I remember like when that. I first met you, I was like, and you're like, oh, this is what I'm doing in volume. This is what my support staff looks like. And I was like, no. No way. Like, that's not what he's doing. This guy's full of it. You know, and then I heard you actually speak. I think it was back in Nashville. And I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to what he's saying. Because he's got some really good stuff he talks about. So I listened and I was like, he, like, he's doing it. He is like living the origination dream. He is just originating. You Gray know? area. So, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Amazing to me. <laughs> it's amazing to me how foreign my model is to the mortgage business. Yeah, yeah. It's just crazy to me that I've had so many new LOs and, you know, credit to the new uh, LO groups on Facebook, et cetera. And all of you guys that are new to this really bust in your butts, but they're being trained to, you know, do data entry yeah. and to chase pay stubs. I, I haven't opened the loan origination software in years, years and years. I don't even know how to do it every now and then. I know the, the compliance officer uh, who is also the wife of a former colleague, somebody I originated loans with. So again, just this family kind of thing. Um, but every now and then she'll say, hey, you got to go open uh, Calix so that you can uh, download the new version. I'm like, okay. And it does. And because Calix is awful, it takes 20 minutes. And yeah, then we move on. Yeah. <laughs> topic these days yeah right? it is but yeah oh, I, I don't even participate in the los because yeah it's not my job right, right. i'm a loan originator so yeah. to all you new los out there that are learning the skills the bricks the structure how to you know have a foundation for how your business runs you got to do it right but know this that this is not how it has to be forever Right. And one of the, so two of my favorite analogies when it comes to like running a mortgage industry or mortgage business is like one, like is looking at, uh, is looking at Amazon, right? So Steve Bezos, I don't know, I never know if I pronounce his name correctly, whatever. Um, so he, like, he, he, you're not ordering the package from him. He's not putting it in the box and then putting the tape on and then putting the label. He's handwriting your address on it. the car and driving it over to you and saying, here, Adam, you ordered this new book, you know? And I mean, so you, like, he delegates it out, but you're just as happy because it's delivering the product that you expect time yep. and time and time again. Every now and then you might get something from China that's a little bit crazy, but you know, <laughs> um, and so, and it's so true. It's just no company like goes through growth where they expand and grow without delegating this stuff and hiring and, and all of that. But with originators, it's like, it's such an encompassing position if you get stuck and you allow it to be, because not only do we have to be good at sales and like generate business, then you've got to be good at data entry and getting the stuff in there, then you've got to be good at tracking down all the stuff you need, keeping up with the guidelines. Oh, well, yeah, let's not forget in. about guidelines I mean, and rules oh, and regulations. And, yes, yeah. it's just, it, it encompasses so many different things that, yeah, you can do all of it, but you're not going to get very far alone. And um, I mean, like, not very far at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> Todd Bitter. Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, unless you're Todd. Look, He's unless the you're only Todd one. Bitter. Yeah. He is the, He's the only yeah, one. Anomaly. He's the only one. He's, yeah. Todd has become a very dear friend of mine. And um, and it's funny because he'll, he'll admit, he'll be like, you know what? 
Like you don't want to do it the way that I do it, but this is how no. I do it. You know, he, nobody um, wants to do it the way Todd does it. He's amazing no. at it. He's going to be a guest on the show in the not too distant future. I, we he, yeah, we actually talked about it the other day. He, he mentioned that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's a machine. It's, he's it's built. Insane. Yeah, he is just built different than ninety nine percent of the other people. More, out. I mean, probably yeah. more than that. I mean, yeah. I would say a hundred percent. There's yeah. really nobody like him. And um, but for all the rest of us, <laughs> uh, yeah, we just need to keep answering our phone, like Todd says, but let other people help us with all the other stuff. Yeah. So Amazon's a great analogy, Michelle. Yep. And the one I had learned, and maybe it's because I learned it so long ago, it was pre-Amazon. It may have actually predated Amazon because I'm old as fuck. How old uh, are you? Seriously, right? <laughs> but it was always like the doctor's office. That was going to be my right? other one. You, yes. When you walk yep. into the doctor's office, the doctor's not sitting at the counter checking you in for your appointment. Nope. And nope. the doctor is not showing you to the exam room and giving you a paper robe. And he's not, the doctor's not the one getting your weight and your temp and your blood pressure and all of those no. basic things. And in reality, for the, I don't know, two hours that you're going to be at the doctor's office from door to door, you see the doctor for 15 minutes. If that, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. the model I've always really kind of liked is the doctor's right. office or the dentist's office. And then when you leave, guess what? He's not the one going and sitting down like, okay, so that was an hour and they owe me $85 and I'm going to write up a bill and I'm going to stick it in this envelope and I'm going to lick it and put a stamp on it and mail it off. Oh, and then I'm going to deal with their insurance company on and on. Yeah. No, that's no. be the doctor, be Bezos, be the dentist. Exactly. Yes. But then that's, then that's the thing. Analogy. You leave the doctor's office and it's like, hey, who's the doctor that you see for this? Oh, it's Dr. Smith. You're, and then if they're like, hey, what are the name of the four nurses that you also dealt with while you were there? Um, Dr. Smith's nurse? I mean, you don't, you don't even know. Yeah, you don't and know. The doctor gets all the, you know. So yeah, that's another, that's that's another great analogy. Those two are my favorite ones about this industry, you know, because it's it, I mean, nobody, nobody can do it all. No, and I guess why it's so foreign will be a yeah. subject for another episode. That's right. All we can do is talk about it over and over, and maybe eventually people will start to hear us right. <laughs> maybe. All right, Jen, yes, I know we're running way over. I'm surprised you didn't hold up your it's five, Michelle. Your it's five Michelle. minute red card. It is Michelle. All right. I'm surprised we didn't talk for like two hours. I know, and really. we could. We yeah. could. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially about this kind of stuff, because no, we just no. have so much symbiosis on how we're doing it, how we're building it, how we're taking care of our clients, how we're taking care of our team, what right. that translates to in our personal lives, um, our personal successes, that we share that, that we want our clients to see that, to share that, to be involved in that, to be able to do that for themselves, on and on. Um, yeah. So, yeah, very true. We could go on and on and on. Let's not. Let's get Michelle <laughs> booked for another episode. Of course. And yeah, Jen, why don't you wrap us up? Take it home. All right. For those of you watching, you can see our lovely text code at the bottom of the screen. If you're listening, you can text TIPS to 63566. Uh, it'll send you all kinds of information, past episodes of the show. If you're interested in being a guest on the show, you can get our information there. We are booked through almost all the way through August of next year. I'm starting to book September of 2022, which is crazy. Wow. Um, you can find our official podcast, Spotify and Apple, get a copy of Adam's book, Just the Tips, and you can get tickets to the Mile High Mastermind, September 24th, 25th at DU, University of Denver. Uh, we've got some phenomenal content lined up for that this year. So all of that is by texting TIPS to 63566. We're going to miss you at that event, Michelle. I know. We're, we're, I hate we're, it's okay. Going forward, we're going to coordinate a little better on the... <laughs> So we don't get booked yeah. over. Like, I'm just and, glad that we can all go to events again, you know? Right. Yeah, here, right. here. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you uh, so much for having me back. It's always so fun to sit and chat with y'all. And I miss my friends. Always good to see your face. And just sit around and talk about this stuff. We're going to get there. Yeah. All right. Soon. All right. Well, thank you, Michelle. I know it's a big time commitment. And to all of you watching or listening live or in syndication, thank you for tuning in. We'll have another episode for you next week at uh, 1030 Mountain Time, as is always the case. And tune in for that one. Michelle, love you. Thank you for doing this. Miss you. Right. Bye.
Bye, guys.